I don't know about you guys, but I'm still basking in the afterglow of this great new Batman set. And while we're on this DC high, thanks to our wonderful friends at WizKids, I'm able to preview the first annual DC starter, the upcoming Superman and Wonder Woman starter. Randy already produced an article going over the basic actions on the reserve pool, and now it's my turn to go over the characters. While this starter may not lend itself quite as well to team building as the, uh, the previous sets we've done, we're still going to go for it anyway. So let's get right into it with Artemis. Though she was relegated to the background in the Wonder Woman movie, she's here front and center for the starter. In general, I'd love her a lot more if she was one energy cheaper, so with the five costs and with uh, what we have coming later in this set, I generally have to favor the wall active ability of uh, Renouncing Olympus. This could act as a nice counter to Darkseid's sidekick swarm, even though it also means you have to attack with yours as well. Uh, we lost the Cursed Archaeologist thanks to the rotation in Golden Age, but these new cheetahs offer some great alternatives. For this build, it's a hard choice because we only have one other villain in this starter, so that makes for some, some manner of monster to be a little less useful, but she could be really fantastic for a villain team build. Feline Fury is also great if you were to pair it with like uh, the, the new Ra's al Ghul level, so if your opponent is still playing a, uh, a villain team, you can remove the, uh, the villain affiliation from your, any of those potential villains you're facing. Uh, even without Roz, though, we're still going to go with the Feline Fury, since the Goddess of the Hunt might be a little redundant with Artemis. And once again, we're going to avoid the wind fielded effects due to another card that's going to come up later in this build. I really love the rare Giganta and Green Arrow and Flash, and she's back with some cool alternat alternatives in this set. While Villainy Inc. could have been great in a variety of builds that punish your opponent's low-level characters, just think of how great she would have been with like Umber Hulk or Serena in Golden Age. I gotta say though, uh, standing tall looks to be the powerhouse here. You get a lot of mileage out of Giganta's global, and also we recently learned that the X-Men First Class set is going to have the new ability Awaken, where that triggers every time your characters spin up. So Giganta's global here is going to be huge going forward, and that pun is totally intended. So next we have Jimmy Olsen. I don't mean to ignore the other two, but Signal Watch here is the type of card that just puts a huge smile on my face. Reducing the purchase and fielding cost of Superman and Supergirl means we have to go back and completely rethink and reevaluate all the previous Superman and Supergirl cards. Supergirl with Overcrush and War of Light is suddenly way more appealing. Uh, the common and rare Superman from Green Arrow and Flash, or for uh, both of these two, their Iron Will versions from World's Finest, may suddenly be a lot more meta viable. Uh, all because of Jimmy Olsen. It's just a really great card, and we've got a both a Supergirl and a Superman coming up in this starter. But before we get to those two, we've got Steve Trevor. The two cost does some decent damage, and uh, the man from Argus is ignoring damage with when Wonder Woman's out. That that gets rid of his main weakness, but really, it's the uh, the Muscarian liaison is is by far my favorite here giving you a nice discount on Wonder Woman, and since we have Wonder Woman in the set, we'll go with this Steve here. One thing you can do that's pretty nice is you compare him with Magic Missiles Global, or now Unstable Canister, and you can zap Steve and essentially get Wonder Woman in your prep for two less energy, and instead of the three or less since you spent one for Magic Missile. You'd also then get Steve to roll next turn as well, so this could make for some really nice ramp. In the home stretch now, we have uh, Jimmy Olsen giving us a discount, so he, now we have Supergirl. And even with a discount, the seven cost life gainer doesn't quite excite me. All in the family might be nice to stop villain over crush, but I think I have all your powers would be my favorite. Giving you some nice churn if she actually gets through or if she has over crush. Uh, she actually might work really well with something like Aunt May, offering you plenty of stuff to potentially move into your, uh, move into play if Aunt May gets KO'd. Now we're down to our two marquee characters. Superman, interestingly, offers very similar abilities to Supergirl, with Phone Booth acting as a villain, damage sponge, and uh, Symbol of Hope dealing damage rather than healing. But uh, living in a world of cardboard is easily my favorite, especially with this team and its variety of energy types. It wouldn't be too hard to have an 810 level 1 Superman. And with Jimmy Olsen giving you the discount, a 4 cost with that stat potential is pretty killer. And last, but certainly not least, we have Wonder Woman. And all three of these are actually pretty fantastic. Uh, Child of Clay is great protection from Magic Missile Global or Blink Transmutation or Splinter's Teachings. The list is pretty huge. 
Ambassador of Peace is kind of hilarious since it destroys your opponent's ability to use their own globals, but it also does the same to you, so it's a double-edged sword. So you'd probably want a team without globals. I would have liked this a lot better in the Professor X meta, and we've got Giganta in this build, so we're going to go without this one. So instead, we're going to go with my the last one here. This is actually my personal favorite, Reflections. Stopping when fielded and when attacks abilities is pretty huge. The new common Firefly or Lantern Ring damage or rare Orion, it stops Dwarf Wizard, it stops Stepford Cuckoos. I mean, with Constantine lost to Golden Age, she's a great card to have. All three of these are great, and since we've been avoiding the when fielded abilities in the set for this build, we'll go with Reflections. But you could really go with any of these three in response to whatever your local meta has. And there we have it. This set offers some really cool options and some tools that inject a whole bunch of new build options for the DC Universe. The starter is just really good, and it makes me really excited to build with it. So another DC home run. If only the movies could have this good of a track record.